I had, I have a very dear friend who I was sitting at lunch with one day and we were talking about how do you prevent it, you know, in these communities, these lower income communities in New York or Washington Heights, for example, and, and who are the role models? And I remember him saying to me that the role model when he was younger growing up was the super. Mm -hmm. Right? And that that was like the super role model. And as he got older, he recognized that that was not even like the super super, right? It was kind of a plant for the super. And I was struck by that. And I, I, I said, well, what do you... And this is somebody I'd met when I was a very, very young lawyer who was extraordinarily special to me and I, I trust very much. And I said, what do you... What do you do in these communities to help kids who are disadvantaged or who are you know, growing up in broken families and who don't have those kinds of role models and who are in pain? And his answer was do outreach to the kids, you know? Let like kids from these neighborhoods meet other kids and let them understand that there's a world out there of opportunity for them that involves all the things that we take for granted. You know, all the things I take for granted with my kids. And if we could empower young people to say no to the police and to stand up and not consent to the search or feel bullied into making a statement or letting people into their home, that's a great start. And if we can then, and this is why I say don't make yourself vulnerable, right? Because you've got a voice to be heard that's going to help other people that you haven't even met yet. And you won't be able to do that if you default yourself. So, uh, does anyone in this room now, I think we can do a little Q&A with the audience, is there anyone here who has any questions for us? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. I have one, how do you feel about like, electronic cigarettes and that type of like, people carrying cannabis but it's kind of hidden? E-cigarettes. E-cigarettes, vaping. E vaping. Yeah, vaping. Yeah. Oral cigarettes. Come on, Joe, you know what we're talking about. Look, I believe marijuana should be legalized, okay, for all purposes. I believe that alcohol and tobacco being lawful and marijuana not is a, is a real, it's shameful. But it doesn't change the fact that someone hiding marijuana on their person in a concentrated form, pretending it's an e-cigarette, is breaking the law, right? And I'm not going to suggest to you ways that you can better get away with things. My suggestion to you is that you raise your voice and stop these things from, from being part of our law, right? And that's the way to do it. Does that make sense? Yep. Yes, it does. You guys have any other comments to that one? I am here because I volunteer with an organization that used to be called Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. And we have changed, and now we're called Law Enforcement Action Partnership. But that's a hard one for me. <laughs> but my purpose, my reason for being here, my reason for volunteering, for speaking, is to end the war on drugs. Mm -hmm. We should not be criminalizing people who use cocaine, marijuana, heroin, any of it. Young people will not be able to get this stuff if we legalize it and regulate it. It's not just marijuana, it's all of these things. People don't stick a needle in their arm recreationally because they're having fun. They're dealing with issues. It may be a medical problem. Deal with it medically. Once we arrest somebody and give them a conviction, that's, they're done for. Mm -hmm. You can get over a, a, an addiction. Lots of people get over their addictions. You cannot get over a conviction. With a criminal conviction, especially a drug conviction, you can't get a student loan. You can't get into public housing. You can't have many careers, professions. You can't even have entry-level jobs. And is that going to make me stop using heroin when, when my future is completely cut off? That's, that's the big picture, and that's why I'm here. I want to see uh, the prohibition against drugs ended. It's, uh, it makes no more sense. We've been doing it for generations, generations. We spent billions and billions of dollars 
over all these years. We have ruined people's lives, not because they're addicted, but because they have criminal convictions. And they've been made to feel like criminals. Uh, they, if they're incarcerated or they're not incarcerated, they are made to feel like criminals. They're made to feel like less than. Uh, prosecutors say it's a wonderful thing because then we, we force people to go into uh, rehab. You can't force anybody to go into rehab successfully. It won't work. That's why probation and parole don't work in this country, because people violate probation and parole using drugs. Well, Americans are the, the largest users, the greatest consumers of illegal drugs in the world. <laughs> if, if Americans want drugs, they will get drugs, no matter how illegal they are. That's what we have to do. We have to end this prohibition against drugs. Regulate. That's can, I just, can I just have one more, yeah, one more question? I just, something just, just came up to me. Um, um, how does an Instagram or a Snapchat or a Facebook profile, whether I'm sharing pictures, taking pictures of things, somebody had it and I put it through there, how, is there, is there any way that that could, in a court of law, like they could go on my account of and course say is. this is what... This of course there is. Look, your, your phone will be, if captured, cell brighted or if you're intercepted, stingrayed and every communication on there, every URL you visited, every picture you've ever taken, every text you've ever sent, everything you've ever bought is going to be there. Right? Let's take Emery. Well, this actually, this is a question that goes on this. Do you guys in, uh, heavily encrypt your electronic devices? Yeah. Me? I might you start. <laughs> Honestly, like I, I mean, as an immigration attorney, I'm scared of traveling, especially if they're targeting attorneys. I know multiple attorneys whose phones have been apprehended. So, yeah. um, I mean, and it's something do, that I'm going to look into. <laughs> if, if you do a 256-bit encryption, the government can't crack it. Correct? Well, yes. <laughs> look. One more question. Okay. <laughs> Anyone? No, the government can't. can crack anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Never say no. Never say no. Not with current computer technology. Okay. Do we have? Do we? Do we have one more question for tonight? Mr. Keefe. This is Mr. Keefe, by okay. the way. So, um, say you're pulled over with the, the Trump situation. Yeah. Is it, it giving officer probable cause if you say you're not allowed to search? No, them? you no, have a right so to no. refuse the Doesn't search. Doesn't give them reason? Nope. No, and if you got drugs in the car, so what? Oh, absolutely. Wouldn't you rather, like, try to put up a defense instead of just ponying it up? Even if you were clean, you would just say, yep. said no, then now they really... You feel like you're antagonizing them, right? No, like, no you got to stay true to your rights. Listen, nope. I'm, exactly. I'm the only guy I know in New York that got a jaywalking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> and I won my day in court with a dismissal. We're going to end here now. If I could just, if anyone has any questions afterwards, we're all happy to answer. We're all available to you um, at any point in time, okay? So thank you for your time tonight. I know that we probably ran a little bit over, but thanks for your time and energy. And like I said, if anyone has any other questions, we can follow up after the event. All right. Thank you all for coming out, and honestly, you know, everyone who shared their story and everything like that. Also, be on the lookout for our next month event. We'll be showing a, a screening of the 13th, the last Tuesday of the month. Also, check out, um, what else we got to check out? What else are they? Virginia Diversity, right? Oh, and next month, Viridian will be having a diversity event here in the city at John Jay College, March 31st. And I will also be speaking at that event on part of CCA, <laughs> talking about why diversity is needed in the city. And also, also, CCA will be at the National Cannabis Festival in Washington, D.C., April 22nd. April 22nd. It's a Saturday, so I hope you guys all, and we're also, and we're also looking to maybe do like a pooling or a van or something like that. So if you're interested in coming with us, please, please contribute and let's do it. Let's get a, a big Airbnb and just have a good time. No tinted windows. No tinted windows. And let's be safe and let's be aware. Don't make ourselves vulnerable. Thank you so much. We are Cannabis Coaster. Have a good night, you guys. Yes, we need to clean up, clean up. Oh.